Can you imagine if Drake had been around in the days of the AOL Instant Messenger oh, and the pathetic God. lyrics that, the, that people of our age would have been putting up as they was in their feelings? Because if we're going to be honest, the music of our day, we didn't have a lot of ammo to express our sadness. In fact, we need to be glad that AIM didn't go worse than it did because basically all we had was gangster rap and the <laughs> lyrics that could wind up there under those circumstances. That could be a dreadful and terrible situation. You know what I mean? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the right time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for watching on YouTube and thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is Foxworth Friday. Dominique Foxworth, what's going on? Not much, man. Having fun, trying to balance all this stuff. You know how it is. Well, actually, you know more than I know. Yeah, dog. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, yo, you want another job? You'd be like, yeah, I want another check. But do you want another job? <laughs> hey, man, you get another job. They don't make no more hours. It's still only 24, bro. So yeah, no, nah, I feel that. I feel that. But I, I, it's how you know that you really somebody's friend is when you are actually like genuinely happy. So like when you put out that tweet about uh, your game theory, like I just woke up on on the weekend, just like hype for you, and I was like, I mean, this ain't gonna affect me in no way. But like, it just, I don't know. It's only a few people in my life that I like genuinely am just happy for them. And I'm not thinking about like, man, why don't I have that? <laughs> or, or like, how can this help me? Like nothing <laughs> about, nothing about that. It's just pure like, man, good for him. I hope he crush it. Dog, I appreciate it, man. And for the people out there, uh, March 13th, Game Theory uh, on HBO and streaming on HBO Max. Check it out. It's a little TV show um, I've been working on that has required me to do this thing I haven't done in a very long time, which is leave my house. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting like seeing like how my body feel about that you know what I'm saying it makes for much harder sleep yeah is it your body or is it like psychological because I, I haven't been driving much obviously pandemic and I kind of forgot a little bit like I'm just getting back in the groove <laughs> of like those little things it's, it's funny how people get used to stuff so quickly because I never would have thought two years ago that I would be like oh that going out yeah. feels like a big thing and i'm tired too like we we took the kids out to do some stuff and it's like something that i would have done in the past like we go to dinner we go play some video games at like a dave and busters type place and i am wiped <laughs> just from being out i feel like i want to hit people with let me tell you something about uh one percent problems and it's ain't <laughs> even and this is what it is what they don't tell you about the corner office is it's in the corner and so what that means is anything else you got to do at work is way over there all right you want to go holler at somebody right fast it ain't no right fast it's way over there we went and did something in there today where i had to go check something out it was a whole realm of things i didn't even know those people were there yet we did something we made a left it was a whole bunch of new rooms because that shit is way over there way oh, over man. there you're in the, in the office suburbs. <laughs> you yes. way out, and then you got to yes. go down to the projects. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm in the office suburbs, and it's some, it's some people at the uh. gate making sure you don't get too close to my crib. You ain't about to be, ain't, ain't gonna be, I ain't got to put the no soliciting sign on my door, baby. They're going to stop you before you even think about it or not. Oh, it, man. It, it, it ain't that. So, yeah, March 13th, Game Theory. Uh, check that out. Uh, you think we'll be talking about Aaron Rodgers in some fashion or capacity around that time? We still, are we still, yeah, we, we're going to talk a bit about him, Brian Flores, and your boy Phil Mickelson, you know, by the time we're done with this. But, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, I, he was when he just did one of the McAfee interviews again. Yeah, and and his social media posts, I think, is part of it. Just he's in the news for all of this stuff all the time, and the the social media posts is what grabbed my attention first. Is like he's so young, like young acting, and I don't mean that as a criticism because like the world changes, but people don't. So like the things that Aaron Rodgers is doing are like normal things for people to do, but it's not normal for people our age to do. Like we found other ways to be sad when we broke up <laughs> or other ways to do. And so like, that's what's like, I don't want to be judgmental, but my first instinct, like I have to then reconsider, you know, like my first instinct is to be judgmental. Like, why are you acting like these kids? But then I have to reconsider and be like, man, he ain't doing nothing that I wouldn't have done had I ever been broken up with, which I mean, I don't know what it feel like, but 
I would have found another way to do it. You know, like I, I'm not a robot. I got feelings. I would have been sad too. And I would have might have sent somebody a text like, hey, thanks for the time that we spent together. I, I, wait a minute though. I thought he said they was good. Yeah, but the original post was about him thanking them for what she did for him and like how he made his life like easier and how he's apologetic for for uh like her catching all the shrapnel for all of his foolishness which didn't mean he was not apologizing for the foolishness he was <laughs> apologizing <laughs> that she also had to deal with it since he created it all right so so basically like what we got here is he did not know like yo you know it's gonna look like you quitting your woman right because i know he came out and said that he all centered and everything that she done made his life right and all of that stuff he put the other thing up with the picture with uh the the empty space that was there for him when he tested positive for COVID, right and so i, I don't know like come on man you know you trolling right now right yeah. like when he did that air uh, the air ram book and he tried to act like i just grabbed the biggest book that i had come on homie you know you trolling just own that you trolling yeah lean into it you're gonna be a heel go ahead and be a heel it just hit me what i would have done is put up a corny aim instant messenger away message like that would have been my lame move if i was if i was 22 or whatever or not not 22 i was in yeah. the league by then yeah, yeah you're away message would be like don't ask <laughs> which 100 percent means pay me attention please ask me what i don't want you to ask about i would have yes. put up some some corny rap lyric or something that's that would have been my move yo can you imagine if drake had been around in the days of the aol instant messenger oh and the pathetic God. lyrics that that people of our age would have been putting up as they was in their feelings because if we're gonna be honest the music of our day we didn't have a lot of ammo to express our sadness. In fact, we need to be glad that AIM didn't go worse than it did because basically all we had was gangster rap and the <laughs> lyrics that could wind up there under those circumstances. That could be a dreadful and terrible situation. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've talked about this before. It's like, I feel so fortunate and maybe you could speak to the same thing that I grew up in a house where my parents modeled like what you should have in a relationship because that damn music ain't helped me one <laughs> bit. <laughs> it like it really like I had to deprogram myself of so much of that like it was the general theme of all the music, not just that one song. Everything I remember like had a point of pride for me was to be able to get to the end goal without spending any money. Yo, so so this is the thing to me about that, like in the college space, because there wasn't really no pride in doing that without spending no oh, yeah, money because yeah. we ain't had no money. Ain't yeah, nobody yeah. had no money. Like that's the beauty of college. It's the one place where you can get it cracking without having to put no bread on it or just a little bit of bread on it because ain't nobody really have no bread. And everybody is really just happy that don't nobody's mama live in that house. Right. Yeah. Like, like, like all those things come together. But especially like after I got money, because I don't, gen I, I'm not a spender, right? Like yeah, I don't spend a lot of things on myself. And so that gets to be tricky, especially when people know you got bread because the people around them know you got bread and their expectation is all of a sudden that they, they, they homie done come up on the princess dream. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you got the money, there's just things you spend money on. It's just kind of what it is, right? Like I, it's, I don't know the last time I had to check my balance after I bought something, right? But, I, it but was you know an adjustment. What it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was an adjustment to realize right. it like, oh, yeah, you just gonna have to like, yeah, you. Sp of course, yeah. you can have some, right? Yeah. Like, right. That 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 wasn't that wasn't it. Was I, I thought the game wasn't about that as it was yeah. laid out to be previously. And I would note, given that I had been doing pretty good before, when I could not afford to spend this money, I don't understand why this is an issue now, just because I have it. <laughs> Well, I, I would say that also, but like you and I've had this conversation before, like my wife came from a situation where she didn't have any money issues and she got whatever she wanted when she wanted it. I didn't come from that. Like we weren't broke, but like I had to make some, I had to move some things around, make some decisions if I was going to be going out to dinner. And so like getting to the point where I'm like comfortable with the, with the amount that we spend is an adjustment. But to your point before that the friends know, I get where you're coming from, but I also get the idea of appearances and pride, it matters. And maybe it's different things for you. It is different things for me. Like the expectation, I know one of the things that comes up for, or that used to come up for me and my friends was like ability to do stuff. 
And like my expectation was like, as long as things were taken care of, like I'm good. And I, and at least in my younger years, like I needed my friends to understand that. Like I wasn't asking for permission, you know? And I think that's the same thing as like women who are in a relationship or men who are in a relationship where the other party has money. I don't always necessarily think that it's about them getting the things that they want, but it's also about the appearance. It's like, hell yeah, he spend on me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, see, and see, what's tricky for me just generally is the Joneses, like, we're not gift givers, right? Like, that's just not the way, that's not the, that's not how love is expressed, right? right. Like, my father has some somewhat extreme economic politics, right? Like, this is not, <laughs> yes. this, this is like, like, like spending money to show love is not really the gap. You know what I mean? But it's not, but that's what it is in this other space. So you add that up plus the music that's like, yo, yeah. don't give them nothing, oh, yeah. nothing. Yeah, it was a point it's of pride to, to run through a group of friends. Like, all that <laughs> stuff is really unfortunate things that... I am no longer proud of, at least most of me is no longer proud of, still trying to stomp out the rest of, of that uh, latent misogyny in my body. But yeah. it, was, it was stuff that I used to argue about this with people like, yeah, hip hop music ain't ruining us, but I mean, it's having an effect. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was always like, good. A, yeah, like a lot of that stuff, I'd say for me in terms of taking it in, like one of the more disturbing things about becoming an adult and meeting more people and seeing more things was realizing how many people, like, I didn't think they really meant all that stuff, right? Yeah. And then I'm realizing, oh, no, they really do hate women. This is not <laughs> just, like, played up for entertainment value or, you know, like like the dude at the club, you know, that's about, and these, and these dudes ain't hitting all. Right? No, yeah. this is not some dramatization just to make for fun. They really do hate women. My bad. Because I, I don't hate women. I, I right. did not realize that people actually hated women in that regard i was somewhere once i'll never forget this it was new year's eve and me and my homies had stumbled into somebody's apartment for some little get together or whatever but we got there and it was like an even number of women and men but it was not you couldn't really tell like what who all was there with whom or whatever and so we standing outside and we asked this one dude, we was like, hey man, you know, just so it ain't gonna be no troubles, man. We trying to figure out who in here with who, you know. All right. And the dude said, Oh yeah, well, I'm I'm here with her. I was like, Oh, okay. And then out of nowhere he goes, I'm paraphrasing here because I cannot use quotes. And he's like, you can do what you want. She had a man when I met her. And I was like, like We can do No, we're gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're like gonna leave right man. now. Yeah, I think the difference though is the people who are in the music, they don't mean it. But the people who are listening to it, I mean, I, I think, and oftentimes the music is hyp hyperbole for effect, in my view. But the people mm -hmm. who are listening to it, like, they want to live it to impress the other people. Bruh. And I was one of those people. So. Bruh, them people making that music, they believe it. Like, yeah. I don't think there's a whole lot of turning it up just because that's what the label want. And I think there's right. a lot of cats that's like, no, they really hate women. Like, the, yeah. the, the theme, and see... I get the mentality behind this, problematic though it may be, but I get how you get there. So you get them cats, like, eight ball always, like, I ain't fine, I ain't cute, she just know I got some loot. These cats really feel that way about themselves, right? And so they feel that way about themselves, they get a little fame or whatever, and they meet these women, and it's finally their dream to have all these women, and then they resent it at every turn, because like, you don't really like me. She might. I mean, yeah. no eight ball. She was not going to talk to you before when you were just a fat dude with a Jerry curl. But now that you a fat dude with a Jerry curl and a classic, she might be willing to hear you out. You are 100% correct. Oh, That's man. how it works. Remember that fat girl with a Jerry curl that you saw that didn't have a classic and that you walk right past her? Yeah. yeah, okay. Even with a classic, you ain't gonna talk to it. That don't make you no better person. Yeah, that's that's real. Now I had this conversation. My uh, a close friend of mine is having some relationship troubles, and, and him and his girlfriend broke up. And he's what thirty four now, and got his life together. And he back in the street, thirty four year old black male with some money and can and with his stuff together. He was like, I don't remember being this cute. Because <laughs> this man got got people coming out of everywhere. People walking up to me at restaurants, and he was like. 
I don't know. He he sounded like he was at Sunshine's house. He was like, I ain't never coming <laughs> home. <laughs> I don't think I could ever come home. I'm sure it's going to wear off at some point. He's going to want somebody to care about him again. But this man is in these streets right now. And it's like, I don't know how, how the, the baddest girl – the baddest girl in your high school, like how she felt, like that's how he feel right now. <laughs> they clamoring at him. He not fat. He, I mean, he ain't all that handsome, but he not ugly. Got a little bit of money. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't all that handsome, says Dominique Foxworth. I mean, he know it. He know it's true. You know, we honest with each other. <laughs> See, yeah. I ain't got no gauge on none of that. You be knowing that about yourself. I just look like my parents. <laughs> That's all I know. I ain't really had no reason to do no math on this. Like, yeah. if you if you rocking with me, you are. If you're not, you're not. It's part of some composite. As exactly. my homeboy said, his uncle told him once, he's like, hey, man, don't do nothing because women like it. Because you know what women like? Anything. <laughs> not everything. But yeah. anything. Like, yeah. like, 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 like a man uh, in an undershirt, like a man in a suit, yeah. like a man dressed up like he in the army, like a man dressed <laughs> up like, 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 like he work construction. It, it ain't no telling what it's going to be like a young man, like an old man, like a little gray hair. Impressed yeah. that you still got all your hair like a smooth bald <laughs> head, too. <laughs> Anything, dog. There's, there's somebody out there for you. Somebody. That's that is for sure and they, and they are uh they'll find a way to to like you if you're a decent person and they like you they'll convince themselves i mean that's true of all of us frankly they'll convince themselves that all other stuff is stuff that they like too well most of it at least <laughs> yeah aaron Rodgers. that's what we, maybe that's what we need yeah, to explain to aaron Rodgers. like no man they they do love you for who yeah. you are not for what you do and then maybe you won't have to do all i mean he's coming up so it's back-to-back -back mvps right like he got the mvp again Everything with the Packers seems to be going good. Like, this actually shouldn't be a season of any drama or controversy whatsoever because everything he said from the later part of the season on to now about the relationship with the Packers, it sounded like it's OBKB to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's crediting the coach with uh, saying it's not a coincidence that he got two MVPs while he was there. He got the players that he wanted, supposedly. Like, it, it seems like everything... Should be fine. I thought that him giving, uh, him pointing out the fact that his home life being settled made him a better football player is probably true, but it was also interesting because I remember like defending his previous girlfriends because people were like, and so like he was like indirectly sending a sub <laughs> out here sending <laughs> sub tweets because when he wasn't playing well with his previous girlfriends, people were like, hey, it's because this famous woman and he like brought it back up like no i'm playing well now because of this woman so maybe there was something to that i was wasting my uh, shield shouldn't have put my cape on back then now nah, this is i hate to be a packers fan riding through this especially if you don't live through this before with another dude because now it feels like far the will i retire will i not especially when it's a guy who can kind of still play so like now i mean obviously aaron Rodgers can do more than kind of still play but that's got to be annoying if that's your squad. Like, we got to do this again. And he's so much – It's uh, he's so – the team is so dependent on him. It's such a talented team that is a Super Bowl contender if he shows up. If he doesn't, they're mediocre if Jordan Love turns into somebody we haven't seen him be before. Like, if he can be okay, they are mediocre tops. That has to be a miserable thing as a fan, and particularly those fans, because it seems like there's not a whole bunch else but that, <laughs> you know? Like, if you are, if you're a Knicks fan, I, I listened to you and Monica talk about it before, if you're a Knicks fan, yeah, it sucks that the Knicks suck, but I mean, it's so much. Like, you got a bunch of other teams, you in New York, you got a whole bunch of other stuff, like Green Bay. Like, literally, there is nothing else in Green Bay or Appleton or any of the other places where I had to stay when we played there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's it like to be Devontae Adams in this, though, right? Like, he got to be like, yo, but could you tell me something, dog? Like, I think one of the cool things, like, Devontae Adams, to me, seems like he's in a good spot. Because if Aaron Rodgers doesn't come back, they have no reason to franchise Devontae Adams, Right. Mm -hmm. Unless they want to franchise or unless they want to create franchise and trade with an offer already understood where they can trade him away and get something for it. If they bring him back, they are kind of bound to please Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers seemed to have made it clear that he wants Devontae to get paid. 
Like Devonte got plenty of leverage without having no he leverage. Does. He got the best he relationship because like Aaron leaves, he's like, all right, y'all y'all rebuild mode. Let me go. Yeah, and also if he leaves, and this is something that I just thought about now that I hadn't really considered because of their quarterback situation. They haven't been on a rebuild kick in over 30 years. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Favre took that job over, I want to say, in 92. They have not had to think about a rebuild in 30 years. Different teams do it differently. So there are some teams that haven't gone into a like full strip down rebuild, but there were teams that went into several seasons knowing they weren't going to be competitive. Right. Like the, I can't think of anybody except for maybe the Steelers, the Patriots, and the Packers. <laughs> and the Steelers weren't like that the whole time, but those are the only right. teams I can really think of that, that entered just about every season. Yeah. Like, but, but for the Patriots, it's only for the Patriots, it's only twenty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the Packers, it's thirty. Like you think about this: when it's the crazy. Packers got Brett Favre, and they had Don Mikowski before, like they thought it had a little something going, right? But they had Favre get there in '92, and then like by '94, you know, like oh, okay, this this is what we got here. In '92, the Patriots just stripped this down to the screws and got Drew Bledsoe, and then brought in Bill Parcells to actually execute the rebuild. The Steelers. There was still a stretch, I want to say, like two, three years in a row with Cowher. Where like they didn't make the playoffs and were either below 500 or right around there. The Packers have not gone into a season, at least since 1995, not thinking, you know, a few things break right, we can win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. I mean, I never remember the Steelers had Neil O'Donnell and they were competitive with him. They had yeah. the Cordell Stewart um, oh no! B- between Terry Bradshaw okay, and you're Bill Roethlisberger, okay. no, but I'm saying, but oh, between yeah. those two guys, it was all the same guy, just right. looked different, right? Your Mike Tomzaks, your Bubby Bristers, your Cordell Stewart's, your Tommy Maddoxes, yeah, and Neil maybe O'Donnell. I, maybe I'm misremembering Neil O'Donnell, but I feel like I know he wasn't top of the league, but I feel like that team felt like they were competitive. But I mean, it's semantics; it doesn't matter. Your point is right. Nobody is. Nobody has been more fortunate than the Packers or better at, at picking out quarterbacks. I guess they traded for Favre over this time period and got two Super Bowls to show for it, which is seems like it shouldn't be a disappointment because there are teams without any, but it feels sad to have to have quarterback stability, like top of the league, MVP level quarterback for 30 years and got two bowls. Now, of course, part of it with Favre is he's much more of a trick-or-treat scenario, yeah. right? So, some, I mean, he threw six interceptions in a playoff game once. Sometimes, sometimes you, you know, he, sometimes he was somewhat responsible for what it was. But you're right. Now, with the Steelers, you're also right. They went to a Super Bowl with Neil O'Donnell. They just okay. didn't have a quarterback. But even still, organizationally, they could figure out how to make that thing work with mediocre quarterbacks. Cordell Stewart got to an AFC championship game. Right. You know, yeah. they'd get that figured out. But, no, this is... For Packers fans, if they don't have Aaron Rodgers and poor Jordan Love, man, like if Aaron Rodgers mm-hmm. leaves, you got to demand a trade, dog. Like yeah. you got to do something, get caught with, with a with a with a lady <laughs> of the evening or something to get yourself released. I don't know if that'll get you released in yeah. in 2022, but you got to do something to move on, man. Ain't no chance of success for you there, son. Yeah, I think he do that in 2022. Then the people who are critical of him are gonna get the backlash. Like yes. it is, it is adult workers. They are free to do anything they want to do. <laughs> and this man, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's a bad spot to be in. I, but they're they're linked. I don't. He can't run away from it unless he's gonna go sit on the bench somewhere else. Like they did I recommend that. To that. Him. Yeah, I recommend that. I'd yeah. rather sit on the bench than stink. Personally, yeah, but that's not how they think. I said they. That's not how we think. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Jordan, I know. Jordan Love like- think he about to be the MVP, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm rooting for him. I mean, he ain't do nothing to deserve none of this, including get drafted in the first round. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he is just a passenger. Yeah, he he certainly hasn't done anything to deserve it. But I, I mean, when they first drafted him, he wasn't he didn't dress the entire season. Like he wasn't the backup quarterback. So I'm not sure that they would enter this season. Well, I guess if they're planning on stripping down and stinking, then they're fine with yeah. entering the season with Jordan Love out there. Also, to be fair, that 2020 season. I may not hold it against you that you didn't dress as the COVID offseason and you, right, are on a team where they don't really need you. 
you know, like I'm, I'm, I, I might come some slack, but uh, I want to yeah. switch gears a little bit, man. Uh, what's up with your man Flores? Our friends at CarMax have reimagined car buying to deliver a truly flexible shopping experience that puts you in control. Because at CarMax, you have the freedom to shop online and on the lot. Once you find the right car, you can buy online with home delivery in select markets, or choose express pickup at your local CarMax. CarMax has you covered with a 30-day money-back guarantee up to 1,500 miles. Learn more at CarMax.com. CarMax, car buying reimagined. What, 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 where are we now at this? Because I am, I have to say this. If he really did, when he left the Dolphins, refuse to sign the NDA and tell them they could keep their money, can't nobody say nothing about this man not standing on principle because oh, sure. I'd have probably took my L in private. Yeah, I mean, that seems pretty principled. They, uh, they, they offer you some money, but he also, like, the Steelers job to me is interesting because I'm not sure what it says about this whole situation. I think that I said this from the beginning. I don't care if he's standing on principle or not, you know, like that. We always, not always, but often we find symbols of things and we rally around them. And then the validity of their claims is dependent on like the purity of their soul. And like, that's what happened with Kaepernick. And we allowed it to happen where they're like, well, he wore Castro shirt. So police violence is still a problem, you know, like, so I, I, I'm nervous or I'm trepidatious about celebrating Flores or denigrating Flores because none of this matters because the problem is real. He brought attention to it. Let's focus on that. But I do think him getting this job, maybe the league thought it was going to help him. But I don't think it makes. I think it kind of makes it clear that he is being blackballed. To yeah, some I'm. Degree. Yeah, I'm somewhat curious. The. I don't know if I want to say the intentions of the Steelers, but let's think about it this way. Whenever it comes up that the Steelers hired Mike Tomlin, people take that as a reason to give the Roonies credit, right? And you hear people point to. Well, of course, the people, you know, the team that came up with the Rooney rule would be the team to hire the black coach, da, da, da. But to me, that is, and I probably said this before myself, like I'm not going to pretend like I may not have fallen in that trap. I don't remember it, but I could totally see it, right? But let's say that that's the case. Why do we always assume that I don't remember if it was Dan or Art, whichever Rooney it was that came over the rule. I want to say it's Dan. Why do we assume that that was something that he did out of the goodness of his heart as opposed to, I came up with the way to keep us out of court? All right, so let's say that the rationale was I did this to keep us out of court. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I also don't know if the most positive inter interpretation of this is true. So let's say it's just, I just want to keep us out of court. Well, then you'd look at this Flores thing and be like, oh, OK, so he's the guy that decides, fine, I'll come up with something that might keep us out of court. Now, of course, it's not the same thing here, but it also seems to me and you tell me if I'm tripping, it seemed like they came up with a job to give him like linebackers coach is a job that he would be qualified to have, but he'd also be overqualified to have it. But they didn't call him an assistant head coach. They called him a senior defensive assistant. And, you know, there are places on the org chart for the assistant head coach a guy that is treated as another level of being a head coach like Anthony Lynn got that job uh in San Francisco as assistant head coach and that's what he was in Buffalo like that's the level that Anthony Lynn traffics in is as assistant head coach they didn't do that for Flores so I, that that's where they're like senior defensive assistant what does that mean yeah I don't know and I think that there's a lot of things going on. So that might be internal coach politics too. It's like, they don't want to upset other people in the staff for bringing him in for whatever reason. But I do think that from being around the league, the Roonies have that reputation of being like better than the rest, which don't mean you're good. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's part of it. And I do think that they have, even if I'm giving it the most favorable reading or giving their family the most favorable reading, they have other interests too, you know? So like maybe they are interested in racial progress, but they are not interested in racial progress above the health of their franchise or the league that their family helped to build. 
and not to mention their financial interests. So like the extreme example of that is like if you are the most bleeding heart, guilty feeling white person, you give your franchise away. Like that, that is the equivalent. Like no one's asking or expect them to do that. But if we are going to paint you as this Nobel prize winning, like super great uh, humanitarian, that's the move you do. So on the continuum, they at, we got to interview some black, everybody got to, got to talk to a black guy. <laughs> like that is far, that's a far cry from that. So you put it, if you're going to put these two things on a continuum is like their interest over here. The health of the league, their interest over here is the advancement of colored people. It, on that continuum, the decision to push for this this rule, and maybe it's only because that's all they could get the, the um, other people to agree to, but let's not pretend like it's on the right side of continuum when it's way over here closer to like this was more beneficial for the league and the teams than it was for black coaches. Yeah. At I the time it. and now. Yes, absolutely. Now, I tell you this, too, though. I give Flores credit for this because I just thought, you know, until this went to some depositions and stuff, we wouldn't really be talking about this anymore because there'd be nothing to talk about. Nah, he and his people have kept this on the front burner. Like, you think about this. Deshaun Watson wound up back in the news this week. Do you realize that we only really talk about Deshaun Watson and what happened with him when there is literally nothing else to talk about? Like the story broke in the first place during this kind of time of year where there's nothing really to talk about. And then when football came around, we were actually talking about his trade value, right? While kind of like, oh, you know, there's that one thing in the air, right? But it was just like, yeah, it's he might trade for Deshaun Watson. And now that we ain't got nothing to talk about again, we're like, oh, wait a minute. There's some dastardly stuff that may have been going on here. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's what it was. Flores has kept this thing. He kept it front of mind during the playoffs. They're going to keep it front of mind after the playoffs. One way or another, they're going to make sure you know he's around at all times. Yeah. I mean, the strategy may not be to win the lawsuit. <laughs> the strategy may be to win the court of public opinion, which is, frankly, just as scary to the league as the lawsuit is, if not more. And I do find it interesting that you brought up the, the Deshaun Watson thing. It gives me a second to defend my brothers in hip-hop culture. We all hate women. The whole country hates women. So we can't just blame rappers. Like Correct. the idea of the Deshaun Watson thing, the the reason why it is the way way it is is <laughs> is because the, our society is the way that our society is built and whatever problems that I mean not whatever problems, there are clear problems with it that should be addressed, but it, it just seems more clear now. Um given what you just the point you just made about how Deshaun Watson stuff, it pop up when we want to talk about his trade value. And we're like, well, his value is brought down because of all of those credible claims. And then we move forward like, nah, he's the same player as he's always been. But he got credible claims of doing some awful things. Yeah, I tell you, that, that's what Flora is, though. Mr. Morality, do you want to trade for him or not? <laughs> like, that, like, if I was on the other side, I'd bring that up anytime he got to talk. And I, I can't believe they haven't done that. That actually may be the greatest testament to what you talk about here. Right. They don't even they don't even realize, oh, wow, wow, that would be messed up and counterintuitive. Nope, nope, nope. They don't even <laughs> they don't even think about that. But let me ask you this, because we talked about it before the show, you hadn't seen it. Have you seen this Phil Mickelson thing yet? Yeah. No, I mean, I heard about it, but I just wanted to read up on it. If we were going to talk about it. Yeah, I've, I've read so, it. So I got a couple thoughts on this. One, I do believe he thought he was off the record. Like, I'm looking yeah. at what those quotes were. Obviously. Whether or not he was on or off, that could become a technicality game that I don't like to get into. But it definitely had to, Like, the reason that I thought I was off the record um, as a, people like, oh, it's just an excuse. Yeah, because it is the thing you bring up when you say something extra wild. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I could see if he thought he was off the record. Even if he was off the record, what a window into rich people. Right? He laid out all these principal reasons not to do business with the Saudis. And then it came back around to, but I'm mad at these people and I'm going to destroy them if I got to. <laughs> You're skipping over the fact that he has an authorized bi biographer. Like, that's your homie. He the one that's out here leaking this stuff. So that's also a problem. But yeah, I, I found myself reading the article and like my union brain pops up sometimes and I understand what it's like to try to find ways to create leverage 
And that's the maybe he's trying to make himself seem more noble than he is. But that's the argument that he was making. It's like I'm trying to force the PGA to treat the players better, pay them more, do whatever, blah, blah, blah. As a union man, I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to find any way to do that, too. But not with them. (laughs) <laughs> you have to draw the line somewhere I'm not pretending like everyone is holier than thou but there are some places you have to draw the line and that is not where one where you can I mean I guess frankly he would have gotten away with it if the quote didn't come out if he or if he didn't lay out yes yeah. I understand every right. reason in the world why I should not do That's this fair. I'm gonna do this I'm, I'm still do this though now, let me tell you this it's interesting because you talk about like as a union man one they were able to get some concessions from the PGA that Phil Mickelson will not really uh, enjoy, but so much of because he has set himself on fire and lost all these sponsorships. I mean, KPMG was like, oh, no, we can't balance your books, homie. You got to, <laughs> you know, you, you got to. That's, that's the level of money that Phil Mickelson was trafficking mm, in. Mm, mm. He advertises an accounting firm. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the game that, go- that golfers uh, are playing. You know what I'm crazy. saying? But when you said you thought about it as a union man, I thought you were going to peep what I peeped. So, like, one thing that Mickelson said that I thought was a legitimate point is that players on the tour can't make any money off these NFTs because the PGA owns all the images and moments or whatever that you would use for that. And I heard that, and I thought to myself, hmm, sounds like you boys need a union. Yeah. Right, yeah. and if there's any demographic of the world that would be anti-union, it is the people who play PGA golf. And I just heard that, and all I could think of, you boys need a union. Absolutely, I was thinking. I mean, yeah, I, I felt like that that goes without saying. <laughs> I mean, they obviously need a union, but I think the problem with groups like this trying to unionize is the PGA is smart enough to divide them. The same thing they try to do to football players is like create the quarterback club. And so like there really is no incentive for the best golfers to be in a union because then when you're in the union, theoretically, everyone has the same voice. And when everyone has the same voice, you might end up with max salaries, (laughs) NBA, because all the mid range guys is like, no, 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 that's too much for them. And then they get the money. So like, it's going to be very difficult to to unionize a group or have a union that has any teeth if the only people that you care about have no desire to join a union. Like the the hell, like one of the things that we do in football is we sell our group licensing rights to Madden and stuff like that. And we all get, when I was playing, it was like a $10,000 check every year for playing cards and like being in Madden. You know who wasn't calling me to give me no checks? Tops. Or EA Sports, but I got that money because I was a part of the union. So now, let's say EA wants, you saw what happened, EA wanted to make a golf game. They put, they they didn't even, they put his name on it. This is Tiger Woods. So what interest does Tiger Woods have in a group damn licensing agreement? Right. What interest does the guy who come in in the top 25 in every major have in negotiating salaries? No. Big pots at the top. Rest of y'all, good luck. So they'll never unionize, not only because of the way they feel, but the people with the teeth are not incentivized to do so. Yeah, I mean, I totally get it, I've, and it's helpful to explain. But that's just all I could not stop thinking about. But he had all that. I was like, yeah, you gonna need a, y'all going to need a collective voice. But it, they also are that kind of rich where they can become a union when they need to. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, okay, we go Voltron on this one. <laughs> Like, that's what's happening here. You know, also, all them cats after Phil Mickelson. Nah, I ain't really trying to highlight them Saudis, dog. Yeah, that was the that was the wild part to me, too. It's like Phil didn't read the room, or maybe it's just they are jumping off the ship now because he was presented like, I'm doing this for you. And all the young golfers was like, I'm with Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> well, keep in mind, we finding out that this is coming out because it's going to be in a book, and you know how long the process is on books and stuff. So, yeah, they all might have been behind him, like, yeah, 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 we're going to do this. Then he said that, and it's like that, the 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 uh, the, 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 the dudes. The, not all of them do things. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all giving him the please face. That. <laughs> yeah, they're like, nah, sorry, not, not, not the way I wanted to engage. Yeah, um, I mean, they sacrifice Phil for that. I'm sure that whatever benefits they've gotten from it, they're not gonna give him back on this, 
on this look, but I do think like head to, heading into lockouts, we had guys, players like, let's start our own league. And at no point did I ever think that was a good idea. If we could credibly convince the league that we're going to start our own league, yeah, but we can't because that's not smart. That's not what we want to do, but we wanted an alternative. It's the AFL, NFL. Like that, the reason why that merger came to be is in large part because they was fighting and they looked at each other and said, hey, we the same. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not run up the prices on this labor. Let's combine and let's just squeeze them until we get to the 90s and we start to sue. Right. But that, uh, that is, though, the problem. When, when you lay this out and you put it all in front of everybody, like when you wind up looking at it, it goes right exactly to what it is that you're talking about. There's no way around that. Not not one way. So, Phil, I think the article I read said he made more than $100 million plan. He also got these other issues. I know he no, got he's, some... Yeah. yeah, but he should be he should be too rich for them other issues to be problems, right? He should like, be too thing, rich to be mixing it up in this. Yeah, I was about to say, because, I mean... He's made so much money. Like, I think Forbes had his net worth of something like 450 or something like that, but there's all kinds of questions always what he do with his money. This would be my thing if I'm the Saudis, which is you really want to be doing business with this dude who has this unfortunate tendency of having his name in paperwork when his homeboys got indicted, but he don't ever actually get indicted himself. <laughs> like, I personally yeah. would not want to keep hanging around the black cat that just seems to go places and then all of a sudden people wind up getting indicted. No, 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 no. I don't want no. I don't want none of that. And I look at Phil Mickelson in the end. That if he wanted to do it for the squad, he did it for the squad, and good for him. But otherwise, way to mess it up in every way. Like you got the PGA mad, you got the squad acting like they don't know you, and I don't know how much this will actually come up in his life. But it don't sound like the Saudis are too pleased with him, and I don't think this raises rises to the levels of some beefs they have with other people. But I'm just here to tell you, they they do things, man. If it, if it really come to it, they're not playing at all. I, I would not have said those cross words about them if I were in his position. 400% he thought he was off the record. And <laughs> even if, and I, I learned this from you. Even if you off the record, there are some names and some things that you just don't need to bring up because it ain't worth it. If people know, they know. If they don't know, then they're not going to need to figure it out. But you're not going to have me on tape or in your memory having said these names or these things. So you're right. His transgressions have not risen to the level that they might do some wild stuff. But they're capable of wild things. And the point you made a second ago I watched enough mob movies to know that no cats have nine lives. The cat that keeps surviving is a talking cat. <laughs> and some people don't mess around with the chatty cats. So I, I'm with you on all of that. And I do think that he must have thought that was off the record, but he should learn the lesson that, that's, I mean, it's just not worth it. He should have said, yeah, I know what's happening, but you know. And I know what you know. I'm just doing what I can do to make things better. The end. All, all the principles in the world he can decide to stand on. And you did it today. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, this is your one. It, like, if they were using this Super League as leverage, now by this quote getting out, you can't use them as leverage anymore. <laughs> like, he ruined everything. <laughs> Yeah, this Super League, this whole concept, though, because remember, they, the Super League, they tried that in Europe. They're going to try this here. Like, the big bread is just like, we're just trying to get all the best. How about that? The problem is, outside of Champions League soccer, I don't think that conceptually is that interesting. Like, you've got to have the potential for the, the, the up from nothing to come up and make it happen. Otherwise, it just doesn't go. It, it, just, does, it just doesn't wind up being as, nearly as interesting yeah. and compelling for the average viewer. I think that I'm, I'm of two minds. I think it's different for different sports, you know? So like for, I think there's a level of quality that once you get over it, it doesn't matter how much more quality you get for like football and basketball. Like if you only had enough for four teams in football and it's like all, like both teams are all pro level teams. Like, I don't think the average fan would be able to tell a difference in the quality of football. It wouldn't make a difference for, um, Golf, though, I think it might make a difference in part because the people change every week. So like, we only need 30 teams, we only need 32 teams. It might be interesting from a golf standpoint. I only need to know 30 dudes and like follow them for a season 
feels like there has a chance for that to be more compelling because not that I watch a bunch of golf, but whenever I do turn on some golf, the guys in the leaderboard, I know one or two, maybe have yeah. heard of a third, and then it's I all just you. random. I, let me just say this one thing about golf worth noting. Of all the sports, it is more apparent on television if you have ever played golf how much better they are than you than it is apparent about literally athletes in any other sport like you think you look like that playing basketball you do not but you think you look like that and your point about football like there's a clear level of quality difference between nfl football and college football in terms of how well the game is played in terms of entertainment not so much right basketball is different basketball only works at its best college basketball is nauseating at this point (laughs) but with golf if you've ever picked up a golf club you get out there and look at what those cats do and you know I can't do that. And I think if you went down to the second 100 players, instead of like if the first 100 players didn't exist and you brought up the second 100 players, it'd still be a bunch of dudes way better than the golf average golf watch would ever be. And they probably find them to still be pretty interesting. And it would still be compelling because the drama right. of golf is about the course more than it is about the players. Right. I mean, I, th- I think you're making my point is I agree is that all 100 of those guys that are up there are at a quality that is yeah. high enough that it, that fans will not be able to decipher it. The only Correct. way for them to get more uh, buy-in or more people to watch is for us to become attached to the players. The only yes. way we get attached to the players is if we see them regularly. And that's my, that's my argument for the Super League is we only got 30 guys completing. They don't got to make the cut. They always in, and they're going to finish their course. Then we have storylines, and we get to know these people, and then – you get drawn in. They do a documentary yeah, come, about them. Yeah, they could come to hate each other more. I hadn't thought yeah. about that part. Yeah. Beef. Beef yeah. might be abundant. It's not, yeah, it's, to me, it's not about a higher level of quality. It's just about um, improve or give NBAing it a little bit, like giving us some soap opera and some storyline to care about and a reason to tune in. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, that is Dominique Foxworth. Check him out on Get Up. Check him out on Debatable, various uh, ESPN properties and always Foxworth Friday here on the right time my man I appreciate it oh always loved it all right man and ladies and gentlemen thanks so much for joining us here on the right time thanks for watching on YouTube uh we do this three times a week Gabe Bassade and Adi Khan handling things behind the scenes thank you gentlemen uh remember follow the right time rate us review us give us five stars you only give us four stars I'm inclined to believe you are a hater uh check out Game Theory March 13th HBO HBO Max and we talk to you guys in a couple of days take it easy (laughs) 